In this video, the analog versus digital battle rages on into the world of compressors. We compare the Warm Audio WA2A analog compressor with the Universal Audio LA2A digital plugin. Hi, my name's Ed from edthorn.com, here to help you make the most out of your home studio. In one of my recent videos, I compared the Warm Audio WA73 Analog Preamp with the Universal Audio Neve 1073 Unison emulation. Now, as with this video, the point of that video was not to compare a modern reproduction against a digital clone, but to demonstrate how analog and digital processing units compare. A like-for-like -like comparison would obviously be the original Teletronics LA2A, but they're quite expensive and I can't afford one. Warm Audio, however, offer a significantly more affordable alternative, and I think it sounds great. The comparisons today will be on acoustic guitar, bass guitar, and vocals. The LA2A and W2As are optical compressors. This means the audio signal feeds a lighting element which shines onto a photosensitive light-dependent resistor. The resistance of this photosensitive element dictates how much compression is applied to the audio and how quickly the signal is attenuated. This also affects how quickly or slowly the release time is. The attack and the release curves are non-linear and depend on how much or how little signal is being driven into the compressor. The combination of lighting elements and non-linear behaviour results in a slower response than a typical FET compressor such as an 1176 or a WA76. The WA2A has a limit and compress option so I've elected to use the LA2A Silverface version of the UAD plugin with both sets of compress mode in the interest of a fairer comparison. Both the Warm Audio and the WA2A have a pre-emphasis dial, which is effectively a sidechain EQ, controlling how much top end enters the compression circuitry. And for this comparison, I've left this flat on both units, so the low end is balanced with the top end and hitting the compressor equally, and I'll demonstrate this on the bass guitar later in the video. Let's get into some comparisons, and the first up is gonna be the acoustic guitar. I've started by dialing the settings to be exactly the same on each unit to determine how the devices behave differently, and the first audio is gonna be the dry, uncompressed audio for your reference. So straight away you can hear the plugin is no way near as loud despite having the same settings. In the next example I've raised the output volume and adjusted the compression slightly aiming for a compression of 3 to 5 decibels. This was easy to set on the analog and as you'll see from the plugin I've had to raise the output gain and the level of compression to get the same level of compression and volume. The warm audio seems to have a slightly richer and deeper sound, but the difference is relatively marginal. For the last output test, I've cranked the output gain to drive the signal to distortion to compare how they sound. Now, obviously, you wouldn't necessarily do this on a real acoustic in real life, but you never know, and it was fun to try. So you can really hear the difference in quality of distortion there. The warm audio, although slower to react and compress, offers a warmer, arguably more musical sound. The plugin is definitely quicker to compress, but I think it has a more brittle digital sounding distortion. Let's move on to the bass and hear how that sounds. And the first example, again, is gonna be unprocessed. Thank you. 
So again, you can see on the VU meter and you can hear that the units are responding to the audio differently. Despite being at the same settings, the plugin is compressing the signal way more, suggesting that it's considerably more sensitive to low end information. At this point, I had the pre-emphasis dials both set to flat and to match the volume and compression, I've had to boost the output on the plugin and reduce the level of compression. And as you'll hear, that brings them more in line. For me, the analog has more body depth and warmth to it. In this next example, I've aimed for a compression level of minus 10 decibels, and you'll see how much further I've had to dial the warm audio to get the same level of compression as the plugin. And again, I've cranked the output just to test the distortion. Let me know which one you guys prefer the sound of in the comments below. Finally on the bass, I've dialed the preemphasis all the way to the other side, which introduces more top end information into the signal, allowing the bass to roam a bit more freely. What this sidechain feature is effectively acting as is a high pass filter, as you'll hear. And finally, we compare the compressors on vocals. And again, I started with exactly the same settings. And as you'll see, I very quickly had to dial the settings on the plugin to match the compression and output. So don't stop breathing now. Shine a little light on the world. This peaceful night of our sweet surrender is gonna set fire to us all. So don't stop breathing now, shine a little light on the world. This peaceful night of our sweet surrender is gonna set fire to us all. So don't stop breathing now, shine a little light on the world. This peaceful night of our sweet surrender is gonna set fire to us all. And in the second example, I've aimed for a peak reduction of 10 decibels. Again, the warm audio is easier to dial in and I've had to increase the peak reduction to get the same level of compression as the plugin. So don't stop breathing now, shine a little light on the world. This peaceful night of our sweet surrender is gonna set fire to us all. So don't stop breathing now, shine a little light on the world. This peaceful night of our sweet surrender is gonna set fire to us all. As you can hear, even with the output level the same and the VU meter telling us that the compression was the same, there was clearly more compression from the plugin. And finally, I've cranked the output gain to hear the effect on the voice in case you wanted to get some kind of telephone effect. And I've aimed for a flat all out compression of minus 20 decibels. So don't stop breathing now, shine a little light on the world. This peaceful night of our sweet surrender is gonna set fire to us all. So don't stop breathing now, shine a little light on the world. This peaceful night of our sweet surrender is gonna set fire to us all. The warm audio struggles to hit this, but I feel the plugin has plenty more in the tank for even more aggressive compression. But in this instance, the digital sounding distortion we heard on the acoustic and the bass isn't as harsh. 
So in those audio examples, you can really hear how the machines react differently to different audio sources, largely depending on how much low end is in the signal. With that in mind though, I definitely feel the warm audio transfers more low end through the compression. The hardware is definitely slower to react than the plug-in. The WA-2A is not gonna be your go-to compressor if you want a sharp and accurate compressor, but that's where the WA-76 is gonna come in, and I'm gonna be doing a video on that shortly. In general as well, the analog unit offers less compression at the same settings, and sometimes I had to dial the warm audio further to get the desired results. So what are your observations of the two modules? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. The flexibility of using plugins such as the numerous universal audio compressors means we have a variety of compressor styles at our disposal for a fraction of the cost of an analog unit. But there's just something about the analog. There's a 3D depth to the sound, more warmth, and I think a more natural tone. If you found this video useful, consider hitting the like button. It helps YouTube recognize the video and the channel, which helps me grow, which I really appreciate. Give us a follow over on Instagram for behind the scenes stories and studio pictures. YouTube is gonna suggest another couple of videos on the next screen for you. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Stay safe and I'll see you all on the next one.